So, okay. Hi, everybody. This is a lot more of you than I thought were actually going to show up. So, uh, thank you all for coming out uh, this late in the day to witness our, um, let me go to my slides, which I should have probably done before. And, you know, the beginning of the slides also would be really good. To our Drupal 8 site building speed run, starring panels, media, lightning, and a cast of thousands of modules, not really thousands of modules, but um, a bunch of modules. So this is kind of a unique session in that um, we're going to be doing, we're going to be building a site in front of your very eyes, more or less. Um, and that's actually going to be done not by me because I have the slides, i got to be talking to you. Um, so instead the build is going to be done by my guys over in Boston. And I'm going to be doing this a lot, switching back and forth between the slides and the Zoom because we couldn't figure out any other way to make it work, despite being, I think, smart people. Um, and so I would encourage you to go to that URL right here and follow along with the slides so that uh, you're not too blown around by the chaos. And I'm sorry about that. If we could have figured out a way to screen share this, uh, we would. So what we're going to do is, as I said, build a site um, in Chrome. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. OK. Everybody good? OK. So yeah, first let me, my name, let me introduce myself first. My name is Adam Honick. I am uh, a engineer on the Lightning team at Acquia. And my two assistants um, on, in the middle there, we have uh, Adam Balsam, who is the tech lead for uh, the Lightning team at Acquia. And then we have uh, John Kennedy on the right, who is the lead lead for the team at, uh, for the Lightning team at Acquia. And that's the whole Lightning team, um, a John and two Adams. So we're all here, more or less, today. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a Drupal 8 site to demonstrate the solution to certain, or some, a solu some solutions to certain common site building and site authoring and site editing problems that if you are, if you are how many people here are site builders? Just a show of hands. Just about all of you. Excellent. That's, that's who we're targeting anyway. So cool. Um, so yeah, I want to demonstrate some solutions that we have to three common problems, three very, very common Drupal problems. Um, media handling, workflow control, and layout. And I'll go into the specifics of these more, but you know, it's hard to deal with any kind of media, video, tweets, Instagrams, pictures, being the four ones that are right in my head. Um, in Drupal out of the box, uh, workflow control is pretty lacking in Drupal out of the box. Like a thing can either really be just be published or unpublished, and that doesn't scale up very well. And then it's hard to lay things out the way you want them, too. So usually you have to go and talk to a themer for that if you actually want to get things, if you have, say, a node, and you want to do more than just display a bunch of fields in a certain way, just in a flat list. So these are things we're going to talk about and address. And Adam, have you started the, uh, you started the build, Adam? I have not. I'm sitting on the home page ready to go. Well, I'd say start the build. Here we go. Yeah. So... Yeah, I said we were going to do it. As I also said, Adam is probably going to be doing most of it, and I will periodically switch back to his screen to kind of, as he clicks through at the speed of light um, to do this. And meanwhile, I'll also be discussing sort of what he's doing. Now, I'm getting really confused about switching between these two things. So the site we're going to build is a brochureware site for an imaginary company that we made up. And this imaginary company trains imaginary animals that you may recognize from uh, your phone if you're anything like me. It's called Pokemon Evolve Fitness. And we're going to be building this on top of Acquia Lightning, the uh, Drupal 8 distribution for enterprise authoring. And because I am not a salesman, I'm going to let John talk a little bit about that um, and tell you a little bit more about Lightning and what it does. So John, do you want to say a few words about Lightning? Sure thing. So actually, I'm no longer a salesman either. <laughs> I'm the product manager for Lightning. Oh, not the lead lead and all of the genius in the code is all Adam and Adam. I can take no credit for that at all. Adam, are we on the triple, the, the black slide? Oh, the black slide. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we are next. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's still on that one for a second. So, uh, you know, Acquia lightning is uh, a distribution of Drupal, uh, in Drupal eight. Uh, like it's, you know, the regular concept of a distribution. Um, we had lightning in D seven, but it was really just for our demo framework and testing, um, you know, we actually expect people to build um, production sites on Lightning D8. 
Um, and, you know, we focus on enterprise authoring. So skip to the next slide, Adam. Kind of jumped the gun slide. there, John, sorry. So you should see this says, you know, our mission. And our mission is to um, enable developers to build great enterprise authoring experiences for their editorial teams. Um, this is really important. So jump to jump to the next slide, Adam, which is the, the little chart of people. Yep. Um, and what this really means is that uh, the, the modules and configurations, uh, you know, we build into Lightning, um, enable the developer to empower the site builder and the content author and the site designer. Uh, jump, to the, jump to the next slide, Adam. Um, and, and really, you know, what we've built in focuses around four functional areas and three development principles. So the four functional areas are, are layout, uh, you know, which includes creating arbitrary, uh, arbitrary layouts, uh, once-off campaign pages, but also uh, uh, default layouts and uh, layout options. Uh, so you can give uh, you know, authors a guided path. They can pick between uh, layouts. And you'll see us do some of, some, some of that later uh, in the build uh, workflow, uh, which is really the ability to create arbitrary workflow states of content. So you know, needs review or needs legal review or needs needs editorial review, et cetera, and then, uh, and then assign roles, permissions to take content from state to state. And so you can really set up any uh, workflow that you want um, with, with uh, you know, with Workbench moderation that we've included with some configuration in Lightning. Preview, uh, we're not gonna focus on preview very much today, um, but needless to say, um, there is some basic preview functionality in Lightning and there's some really exciting things coming out uh, in October. Um, called the Workspace Preview System. And you can check out the Lightning page if you want to discover more about that. And media, and you will see a lot of this in, in this presentation. This is about uh, digital media, so images, videos, et cetera, and social media, Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook posts that can be embedded uh, in blocks, in, in posts, uh, through the WYSIWYG editor. You'll see a lot of that. I'm not going to focus too much on the, on the development principles, but needless to say, we have over 60 BHAT tests built into Lightning. So if you build on top of Lightning, you can use those tests to make sure that you haven't broken anything. You can also use our step definitions to build out your own tests uh, and build on top of what we've done. Uh, so you can probably skip back, um, Adam B, and you can uh, head to the, the next slide or if you want to look at what Adam's doing as well. Oh, well, let's, uh, let's actually spy on what Adam's doing. Uh, Adam's doing. Adam, what are you doing? So I have defined a content type called article. Um, I've put some fields into it and I've defined a couple of layouts for it. And now I'm just creating a view um, that will create a page and a block to display uh, articles that are promoted to the blog. And if you've ever used views before, and I assume just about everybody has, this is old hat to you. So, okay, while Adam builds, I will uh, go into a little more about what we're doing here. So, one of the things that doesn't really get a lot of attention when you are a site builder, maybe is something that I can see why it doesn't get a lot of attention, and that's content modeling, basically pre-production, planning exactly what you're going to build. And that really, in Drupal, comes down to defining your, like, what I'm calling data models, so things like nodes, um, you know, what content types you're going to have, what fields you're going to have on them, um, you know, user accounts, will you have fields on them, what kind of fields will you have on them, and any other kind of, th or like taxonomy terms, any kind of thing that's going to store data. Um, and it's really good to plan this stuff out before you do a site build. And the reason that that is the case is because once you have data in a site, Drupal does not always handle change very well. Um, and just trying to change things up after you've started putting stuff together can really, it's not always painful, but oftentimes it is. And you can just avoid this by thinking all the way through it. So in any, you know, in any content model, it basically serves as a blueprint for building your site. Um, it's just a document otherwise, written in plain English. And at the very least, you want to describe every field and every data model on the site. Um, most likely, that is content types, not you know 90% of the time, maybe. But anything else as well, like uh, anything relatively complex, like a view might be a good candidate. Uh, as I said, user accounts are a great candidate. Any kind of taxonomy stuff, um, you know, entities provided by contrib modules. Um, just define all the data, all the data that you're going to store, how you're going to store it, what restrictions are on it these kinds of things. And you know, you don't have to get like crazy and you might say that's what configuration is for, but the point of this is for you. Um, this is like supposed to be human readable and human understandable. And the other thing you want to define in a content model is the relationship of any given data model to any other given data model. So the example I like to use, because it's really obvious, is nodes and users. Every node has an author, every node relates to a, to a user. Um, and that's important to figure out as well beforehand because relationships between data models are dependencies between data models. And 
as I said, it's hard to change it's hard to change data once it's in Drupal sometimes, and dependencies magnify that problem and make it even harder to change stuff. So think about those, get them right before, and you may end up um, saving yourself a lot of pain and suffering. Right? Hang on a sec. I'm gonna be that guy. Another thing you can optionally describe in a Drupal data model, really, um, and we did this, is to describe the display configuration. And what I mean by that is what, when a user visits any you know, no piece of content or a user profile page or something like that, um, what are they gonna see? What fields are they gonna see? If they visit your blog, are they gonna see the date and time that that blog post was created? What info do they get? Not so much how does it look. Um, doesn't matter if it's, you don't, you're not caring at this point if it's blue or you know, on the left, on the right, or in a modal <coughs> or whatever. It's what are you actually seeing? Adam, you got something? You're, you're muted. So you may want to unmute. Thanks. Yeah, I am. Uh, so I'm currently, I've just done um, defined the fields for a content type called training program. Uh, that was something that we had to find in our content models. And now I am laying out, creating two different layouts for training programs because one of the requirements was that you be able to display training programs in two different ways. So I'm using panels, panelizer, and this wizard to create those layouts right now. Uh, okay, cool. Well, he's pretty far ahead of us, but we knew that was going to happen. So we'll get to that. Um, so content modeling, something you do beforehand, plan it out, you'll get a nice repeatable build and you won't have like weird nasty surprises come up later on when things inevitably change. We kind of diagram this out a little bit, don't have to spend too much time on this because personally I find that diagram on the left kind of confusing. Um, but we have, <laughs> Thanks Adam. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> But we have, you know, we're showing that we've defined our content types and then the fields that come off of those content types. So we've just, it's more that we've just thought about it beforehand to make things easier on us. And then we've thought about how we're going to actually display those things and what the different view modes are going to be. Um, just there. What the different view modes are going to be and then like what layouts we're going to have. Not going, in, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have to get like crazy detailed, but you want to plan it out. It's the roadmap. So with all that in mind, um, let's take a look at the design that we came up with. Um, assuming I can, can I get out of full screen? Yes, yes, maybe I should. So let's take a look at the design that we came up with from this. This is what we're actually going to build. You're training with the best people, the best. Um, so this is our homepage. Um, pretty standard looking. It's got a hero block going the full width of the page, and that's significant in Drupal because that's not that easy to do out of the box with like the core themes or anything like that. So we got hero blocks, we have this thing with its nice kind of even four column layout, this informational block describing our training programs for that we can train our Pokemon with. Yet another hero block. Um, and then we have our, we have a left area and a right area. And then we're gonna wanna put some of our latest blog entries and then we're also in the right gonna wanna store some tweets that we wanna feature on our front page. So we're gonna have to be able to store tweets and define which, you know, how they wanna, we're gonna have to be able to flag them as going on the front page. I mean, we also have an about us page, looks very similar, it's got the hero image, has that same four to the floor kind of uh, column thing going on, but different, uh, maybe different data in it. Then we have a training program, which is a kind of content type describing some of the things we will teach your Pokemon to do. Um, this has some very obvious fields, it has a description, it has a reference to, uh, it has a, re a reference, a relationship to a user who will be the person who will actually do, who will actually train your Pokemon. And then it has a reference to what kind of Pokemon the training is actually for. And we have, I'm not gonna get into this, but we have imported the entire Pokemon database of all 700 and something Pokemon <laughs> into this site. Um, and so we're just gonna have to, we're gonna be able to choose Pokemon. If anybody has some favorites, start thinking about them right now. And then we're also gonna have, and again, this interesting kind of full bleed thing, we want to be able to describe the moves that we're going to teach the Pokemon. So that's one way, and, oh, and then a hero block below it. So there's no shortage of hero blocks on this site. So this is one way we want a training to look, um, but we also want to be able to have another way that trainings look. Um, same information, trainer, Pokemon, exercises down here in this like staggered thing, description, all it is is a completely different layout. So we're gonna, as a requirement, we're gonna wanna have both of these layouts predefined and we're gonna want our editors and authors to be able to choose which one they want to use. Um, 
at, uh, at editing time. And we want to be able to just have them change it. And we don't want them to call us when they want to change the layout of something because we are developers and we have better things to do. Probably. And also we have another hero block below there, but you're expecting that at this point. Um, and then we have, another, we have another landing page that uses the same repeatable four column layout that we have, defining the, you know, explaining the trainings that we have. Another freaking hero block. Um, we have a page that lists all of our blog content. That looks like a view because it is a view. Pretty normal stuff. And then finally we have a layout that we want to be applying to all of our blog posts. All of our articles really. And we always want it to look like this. We don't ever want to have you know, we don't want to have to theme it. We want to just be able to lay it out, but we want to actually define the layout for how these articles are going to look. And that's how we want it to look without the comments. So going back to my Chrome and the slides, which are somewhere. Uh, so those are the requirements we have in a nutshell. We want to store references to tweets and then be able to arbitrarily promote them to the front page. We want to also, there's a hidden requirement I forgot to mention. Um, because you don't see it, it's not a UI thing. Um, we want the ability to have a workflow for our blog articles. So let's say we have a lawyer and they insist on legally reviewing for copyright violation, I suppose, um, any content that we put on the site. We want to be able to write an article, have it as a draft, put it into a legal review state, which then the lawyer has to look at it. And from that point, they can either kick it back to draft with you got to change this, this, and this, or they can publish it. So we want to be able to define that workflow. Another thing we want to be able to do is... Adam's actually creating that right now. What, the, uh, the workflow thing? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll switch to him then, because why not? Um, another thing we want to be able to do is we want, as you saw with the training programs and the design, we want to be able to define layouts that can then be chosen um, by the authors and editors without talking to the themers or worse, the developers. And also we have to be able to support as kind of a point three and a half here, we have to kind of support uh, full, bleed, full bleed pages. In Drupal, out of the box, uh, this is not a thing. So we have to set that up somehow. So I'll talk about one of, each of those things one at a time, and I'll probably spend most of the time on Adam's screen, um, you know, and just a moment on my slides. All right. So problem one, how did we deal with media handling in this? particularly for the tweets. This is something that we get pretty much out of the box for free in Lightning. Um, we're using the media entity module, um, which is a contrib module. It's got some traction behind it now, and it's entire, it's a pretty simple module. It's not really very like special or, I mean, it's a great module, but it's not like amazing. It's not like wow. Um, and its purpose is to just define a new entity type that stores media, and it makes very few assumptions in fact, it makes basically no assumptions about what constitutes media. Is it a file? Maybe. Is it a tweet? Maybe. Is it a YouTube video? Maybe. It can, it can sort of deal with referring to all of these things. So that's not the same as file entity, which is another kind of module that you hear about a lot when people start talking about media. File entity assumes that media is always a file, and media entity does not. So in order to have that flexibility, we're using media entity. Um, media entities are not special. They're just standard content entities in Drupal 8, um, which means they're functionally the same as nodes. They have different fields on them, but you can have as many different types of media as you want. You can define new types of media, and you can add fields to them. You can have them be revisionable. Um, as many of these things, you, you can do pretty much anything you can do with them. You can pretty much do anything that you could do with nodes to media items. They're very flexible. As I said, they're versionable because they are just standard entities using standard entity things. Um, they work with just about every module that uses the entity system, which is just about every module. And all we're doing with all this power and all this flexibility is we're just going to add a Boolean checkbox to the tweet media type. We're going to have a, we have a media type called tweet. It comes out of the box in Lightning. And we're going to put a checkbox on that media type that uh, just says promoted to front page, yes or no. Kind of the same, the same way nodes do it, essentially. And that's how we're going to be able to flag media things um, as being shown on the front page. Or in this case, just tweets, not media things in general. So with that in mind, let me check in with Adam. What you up to, man? Unmute. I am back to creating the second alternative layout for training programs. But I just 
finished adding a field to um, media entity tweets okay. that allows us to promote them, and then I created a view based on that. Can we see that really quick? Not the view, the, uh, the field. Yeah, for sure. So that um, is over here in the structure tab, and it's not under content types because it's a media bundle. So under media bundle, we see tweet, and if we look at manage fields, I've just added this Boolean uh, promoted field right here. And then of course, created a view of uh, media type tweet filtered by those that have the promoted field to true. Yeah, which is pretty, pretty freaking obvious because uh, you would also do that for nodes if you want to just create a view and you'd set there, you know, filter by promoted flag true if you're speaking viewees. So that pretty much solves that requirement of our project. We needed to have tweets. We needed to be able to flag them as being on the front page with a field. We got that for free with Lightning. So, hey, awesome, let's move on. So the next thing we have to deal with is content workflow. And Drupal's content workflow out of the box in core isn't really a content workflow. It's you have a thing, like a node, and it's either published or unpublished, Boolean. Um, that works great if I am the developer and someone else is the designer and then a third person is the content person and that's the entire web team. Um, it doesn't work so well if I have, if I'm part of the web department and I'm, you know, one of several developers and we have more than one designer and there's an entire content department that knows absolutely nothing about the inner plumbing of the website and they really need to have, and they have a lot of stakeholders. So it doesn't scale all that well. So what we're using is the Workbench Moderation Module, um, which existed in Drupal 7. It now also exists in Drupal 8, and it has been moved into Drupal Core um, as of 8.2 as an experimental module called Content Moderation. Apparently, they just took the module, renamed it, and threw it into Core. Um, well, so I'm told. And the power of Workbench Moderation is twofold. For one thing, you can take a, uh, you know, you can go, you can take your content and you can define several, just as many arbitrary moderation states as you want. Um, so, you know, in addition to just, you don't just have published and unpublished, you have draft needs review, published, archived, um, or, and that's just what comes out of the box. And some of those states are published and some of those states are considered not published and you decide which ones are published or not published. And that's pretty cool, but you could do that with a flag, you know, like there's a million ways to do that. But the real power here comes from uh, transitions. And that is how Workbench Moderation lets you define rules, essentially, um, that actually establish a real workflow. So it's like, um, you can essentially say that once I have a piece of content that is in draft, um, what states can it then move to? Can it even be published from draft by, you know, this, can it be published to draft at all, one, and two, can it be, can it be going from draft to published by this user, because they're all locked by permissions. So that's where the real, the real power comes from. So what I mentioned before with the uh, problem that we were solving, I just want to spy on your screen, Adam. Um, the problem we were solving is we needed a, a legal review state. We had to be able to define a way for articles to be in legal review just before they get published. And so this is kind of the perfect answer because what we can have is three states, draft, legal review, and published. We can completely remove the ability for anything to ever be kicked from draft to published, we can therefore force it to be available, or we can force it so that you start in draft, you must go to legal review, and then from legal review, you must go to draft or you must go to published. Adam, can you show us really quickly what that configuration looks like with Workbench? And be unmuted because, okay, you are unmuted. Yep, um, so there's a couple of different uh, screens that you touch for that. There's uh, the first place that you would, you would look for this is under Workbench Moderation. Um, moderation states, I've added a new state called needs legal review. And then under moderation state transitions, I've defined three transitions, uh, the ability to go from draft to needs legal review, and then from needs legal review to published or from needs legal review back to draft. Um, and then finally, I've deleted the transition from draft to published so that it forces people to go through those three states. And then on the actual content that we want to moderate, so on, um, in this example, articles, I've selected from the superset of states, the actual states that are available. So if we look at article quickly and manage moderation, we see that I've enabled moderation and the following states are available. Archive, draft, needs legal review, and published. I've unchecked needs review and forced them to go through the special case needs legal review. All right. Adam, can you also show the role assignment page? Sure. 
it, each one of these permissions comes with um, with a very detailed um, uh, granular role uh, that you can you can assign for each one of these. That, for what it's worth mentioning, is a lightning specific thing. So. Yeah, out of the box, Workbench moderation doesn't care about your roles. It gives you permissions for each transition and lets it go with that. So yeah, pretty normal stuff. Very detailed matrix here, yeah. Yeah, that's just the permissions page, which you all, I'm sure, recognize. So workflow, solve for us with basically no effort at all. We had to create just a new state, needs legal review, and then just define the transitions to and from that state. And so now when our lawyer logs in, and has content waiting for him to look at, or her, um, they'll look at it, it'll all be in the needs legal review state, and they will have to then kick it back to draft or publish it. They won't have any other choices, because only the transitions that can apply are even offered to the user. So hey, solve for free. Cool, let's move on. Layout, this is a doozy. So this is how Drupal Core does layout of things. And it's, I mean, I'm guessing you all recognize it, it's pretty simple. You can choose which fields you want to show. You can configure them a little bit. You can reorder them. That's about it. It's a dumb list of fields. There is no concept of regions at all. Um, if you want to lay things out, you want to say, I want these, this bunch of fields to go on the left side and this bunch of fields to be on the right side or anything kind of advanced like that, you're going to need to call your themer in the middle of the night, preferably, just to piss them off. Um, so that works. For, the, you know, for a lot of cases, there's nothing really wrong with that. It's basic, um, but it's a little bit limited if you want to like get fancy. So what if we tried more power? Well, if we bring in the panels module and panelizer and the layout plugin module, so kind of the panels ecosystem here, we can start getting a little more interesting here. Um, you can set up like a single layout for a content type, for example, like this, the big difference here is this has the concept of regions. Um, you can still choose which fields you want to show, you can still configure them however you want, but you can say these ones go on the left side, these ones go on the right side, these ones go on the top, these ones go you know, lower right, whatever. And you can also display more than just fields of an entity. You, could, you can show just arbitrary blocks from the system. So this is actually significantly more powerful. And you don't need a themer to make layout changes. You can have several layouts defined, and you can just choose which one you want to use, and then just be like, okay, well, in this former layout, these things went in this region. Now I want them to move on. Now I want to move them here. But you don't need to call a themer for this. And you also get certain things that panels gives you, like um, you know, advanced things like context, which I'm not going to talk about because, in all honesty, I don't even fully understand them. And that's good. But what if we tried even more power? Well, we have multiple layouts as well. Um, we could do what I just talked about with the single layout, and we could do that with, we could have many layouts that do that. Um, and each layout, like, and when I say that do that, I mean we could have many layouts for a single content type, and we could choose between them. We could allow editors to choose between them, and each of these layouts can use a different sort of configuration of its regions, and they can all just be showing different things, different blocks, different fields, however you want. And editors then get a drop down. They can choose which one they want to use of the layout options you have created, or they can just say whichever one the site builder has set as the default, because when you have more than one layout, you set one as the default. So they can either choose one to use, or they can stick with the default. If they stick with the default, and then you as the site builder go and change that default later, the changes that you make will flow automatically downstream. So they'll inherit the changes automatically. No effort on your part, still no need to call a themer. Pretty nice. That's powerful but this guy again. Panels IPE is our last and most powerful option for setting up layouts. And I'm going to demo this in a bit. Um, and it looks kind of like that. There's a lot more to it. Panels IPE is pretty much a full drag and drop layout UI. Um, like, and it happens right there on the page that you're actually editing. You begin from a pre-configured layout that might just be empty. You can then change the layout right before your very eyes. You have instant preview of everything. You can drag the blocks around reorder them, et cetera, configure them, and you still don't need a themer for any of this. And this demo, it also demos really, really well. And that, I think, is enough power. Give me one sec. So, let me check in with Adam again. How you doing, man? Hey there. So I am just creating blocks right now that you will ultimately use to place um, via the in-place editor. 
Kind of looking at these designs here, um, we have like this be the best you can be black. Um, and what we've done is created a custom black type uh, with a couple of extra fields. It has like a normal body field, like all blacks usually do. Uh, but in addition to that, it has a couple of more. Oh, for God's sakes. Anyway, what he was going to say was, um, kind of... okay, now you're back. You cut out there for a sec. Oh, okay. Um, I was just describing the landing page content block um, uh, block type, and now I'm entering content into those so that you can use those blocks later to place via the IPE. Okay. Well, I'm the landing page block type, what he means, if uh, people here have ever used the Bean module in Drupal 7, it's kind of the same concept. It finally made it into core, where just as you have content types, you've had node types since forever, um, you can now have block types, and each block type can have its own unique set of fields, just the way nodes work. And because they're blocks, you can place them anywhere. So this is really useful in this case um, when we needed a reusable landing page type that had certain attributes um, in common. They might need a background image. Uh, they would. They may very well need like the four the four column layout. Um, so we set that up as a block type, um, pretty much exactly the way you would set up a node type. But we're not going to demo it right here. So, layouts pretty much solved. We've got some incredibly powerful options that are available to our editors and our authors. They will never need to call a themer unless they use the way Drupal core does it with the dumb list of fields. Um, and that's really, we needed some powerful layout, we got it. But we have some bonus points for layout. Um, second which is that, as I mentioned before, we need, from the design, we need to do these full bleed blocks. In Drupal core, this is a little bit tricky because all of the core themes, they don't really do this. They kind of give you all the content in a Drupal core theme normally, or even most base themes that I've seen, um, is wrapped in a container that constrains things to a width. So you need to be able to have things be full width. How do we do it? There's a bunch of ways. But the way we did that is we created a new region in our theme, and it's called we called it containerless. It sits outside of that main container that constrains width, so kind of, I think, below it or above it. Um, basically, right inside the body tag, that allows it to be all the way across. And we, what we also did, and I'm going to explain this in a sec, is we created some custom layouts for use with panels, panels IPE, panelizer, um, that would support that because a lot of the bundled layouts that you get with uh, panels itself or with library modules that provide a lot of uh, layouts for you to use, um, they might not work with that. It kind of depends on what their assumptions were. So we decided to play it safe and create some just custom layouts that would support full bleed. And I'll explain how to do that right now. Um, the way you create a custom layout in Drupal 8 is you use the layout plugin module. Um, this is a module that began life in core at one point and then was ripped out and will soon be put back in for various reasons that I don't even know what they are. Um, but that's the standardized solution for creating layouts. Panels uses this, Display Suite uses this, anything that deals with layout uses this module. And a layout plugin, it's going to be familiar to, to Drupal, the syntax of it and the idea of it is very familiar. I think, to most Drupal 7 themers um, who have had to deal with panels or display suite. Uh, layout is essentially just a bunch of regions with names um, into which things go. It's also which template file you want to use, in this case a twig template, and which style sheet you want to apply to position things correctly. At a, and that's a minimum of a layout plugin. It's a bunch of regions written in YAML. Um, it's a twig file, and it's a CSS file. And because it's a demo, it looks kind of like that, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's, um, but what we have, list of regions, CSS, that will apply to this thing, and uh, the path to the template file that we'll use to render it out. Pretty simple. And the word plugin, though, does mean something, because, um, does anybody know the Drupal 8 plugin system here in? Not so much. Well, in... You don't have to, it's just the kind of thing that you don't have to get into it if you don't want to, but layouts are plugins, which means they're backed by code. Um, and that code can, ha can apply special logic to your layout for building it, for rendering it, even for configuring it. So layout plugins are simple in the simplest case, but potentially extremely powerful. Ours are very, the ones we made are very simple because we didn't really need anything special. But if you wanted to get fancy, you could do a lot with these things. I'm 
the final thing we needed in our theme was the ability to put content that should be always full bleed, like, for example, this landing page. This is actually a content type in Lightning that we provide. Um, it's basically just, it's an empty node. It doesn't even have a body field. It's got a title, it's got a URL path, it's got a moderation state, and that's it. Um, and its entire purpose is to basically be a blank canvas into which you can just put whatever you want. So we needed to be able to put this content type into the full bleed region so that it would always take up the full width of the page so that we could do things like this. We also wanted to do the same thing with the, um, with the training programs because we want to be able to do this thing full bleed. So the way we did that is with magical preprocess functions. If you're extremely nerdy, you'll know what ring zero is. I'm extremely nerdy. It basically just means that in a preprocess function, it's part of your theme, um, anything is possible there pretty much. Um, you have access to the variables, the information that's going to be sort of injected into the template through which any given piece of HTML in Drupal will be rendered. Um, and you also have access to the whole Drupal API. So you can really, really uh, mess things up in a preprocess function, which is why they're generally best for little changes like, you know, moving content from one region to another or uh, adding a CSS class here or like a little bit of markup there. Um, but that's how we did it. And most themers will be just like, yeah, of course that's how you did it. So what do we got next? <laughs> Adam, how are we doing? Can I build things? Can I like yeah, we're doing this? really well. So uh, the article content type is done, defined. We have a layout defined for it. We have a workflow defined for it. Um, same thing for landing pages. We have two layouts, not landing pages, uh, training programs. We have two layouts and I'm uh, created for those and all the fields. So you should be good to go. Well, I've done enough demos in my life to know that when it's supposed to go well, it never goes well. So with apologies to Murphy's Law, let me get out of this. Come on. Let's actually do some of this stuff. So Adam, did you change the theme? The theme Let's has changed. Dinez, our custom theme, yes. Yeah, so this is our home page. There's nothing on it. That's pretty boring. However, Adam and John have been kind enough Man, you'd think I'd remember to log in. <laughs> Adam and John have been kind enough to set everything up and enter all my content for me. So without further ado, I will demonstrate how to build this homepage in Panels IPE. So there's nothing on here, but this is a this is a landing page. As I said, lightning content type. It has Panels IPE enabled so that on any landing page, you're going to be able to set up the layout and put whatever you want on this landing page using this panel's IPE interface. So first thing I want to do is change the layout. And I have a few categories here, or these are our custom layouts that we were, that I told you about that have the container list region um, so that we can have full bleed stuff. Let's go with this one. And now you can see the regions that we have available to show up. So this is prime to go. So let me add one of our hero blocks here. I think it's, yeah, I think it's this one. I'm putting it in the top container list region so that it'll just go all the way across the page. And I also just realized I'm not supposed to be demoing this first, but whatever. <laughs> Too late. Um, OK, so we got that. And as you can see, this block just showed up completely rendered. It has this weird bar that we're using to like move it around with panels if we want to. We can actually drag it into a completely different region um, where it will look strange, or there where it will look even stranger or back to its home. Um, so that looks good. Let's add another one, the be the best you can be block. And because we also want this one to go full bleed, let's keep it in the top region, just below the hero image. All right, looks OK. And we want an <coughs> another hero block below that. I should have to consult the design, but I've done this so many damn times. It's just like, I know what I'm doing at this point. So OK. that's. Obviously, they have extra controls attached to them, just so you can drag them around so that you can reorder them, stuff like that. Um, but that's what we, come on. Yeah, so that's what we want there. So that's, the top region looks pretty good. Um, let's put the blog in the left side here. That is a view, so we go to the views category. And I think that looks good, not in container list, put it in left. And our blog view just shows up completely rendered. Looking great. Um, then we wanted the tweets in the right side. 
So that is also a view. It's a view of media items that have been promoted to the front page, as I mentioned. So that goes here and right. Now it's worth noting that tweets are embedded entirely with JavaScript, so that's why it doesn't show up. Nothing I can do about that, at least not in the short term. So whatever. Um, I think that looks pretty good. So when you save a panelized thing, um, or a panelized thing that uses panels IP, you'll get these two choices, save as custom, save as default. Usually you want save as custom. It means this layout is only for this page and this page only. It's a special snowflake, which it is. So we'll save that and refresh the page so that it actually looks, so that things actually show up. But come on. Damn, it's scaring the hell out of me right now. Um, but yeah, we got our blocks laid out exactly the way we wanted it. Um, and looking, looking great, and we also got our tweets embedded, and these are just live tweets that you can actually follow and actually like and stuff like that um, as a media entity, and we've stored a reference to that in Drupal so that we can potentially reuse that tweet elsewhere, and I will demonstrate that in a second, in fact. So Panels IPE, the most powerful layout method known to Drupal, in my opinion. Okay, so we got our homepage. Um, let's do a training program really quick. And it's a, this is a content type with not too many fields on it. So I think I'll write the electric training. Got some body text. I think what I will use is Samuel L. Ipsum. If you haven't used Samuel L. Ipsum, I highly recommend it. They have a non-profanity version, just FYI, in case your boss is watching, which my boss actually is. So okay, we have a training program. We have a we have this thing. What's that? That is the that's Panelizer asking us which layout we want to use for this training program when we actually display it. So as you can see, Adam set up two layouts: default and alternative. The word default, for the record, is kind of overloaded. Um, default is not actually the default. Um, that's why we're seeing current default and default. We'll get that fixed in Panelizer at some point. Um, but for the moment, but that just means that one of these two layouts is set as the default by the site builder. So for now, I'll just stick with whatever the default is. And I'll make Adam be the trainer. And anybody got a favorite Pokemon they want to use? No? Okay. I'm going with Zubat. And then we have the exercises, those big colorful blocks that show us what exercises we're going to teach the Pokemon. Exercise number one. Um, more Samuel L. Ipsum. I have no idea what movie this is from, but I want to see it. All right, and we'll add another one here. Two, make that an H2. And yeah, I'll just have the whole thing. So this looks pretty good. We have just, we don't have a moderation state on this content type because we've decided we just don't want to have to moderate this one. We never want this one to be in legal review. It's perfectly okay for us in this case to have just published or unpublished. So I'll publish it. And it's got its layout. It's got it all perfectly. And we didn't have to write like a special template for this. Um, it's using the layout that we defined in Panelizer, the default layout that we defined in Panelizer. And it's showing everything, reference to the trainer, reference to the Pokemon, the weird uh, descriptive text, and the two exercises, full bleed, and the hero block, which is showing up below here because that's what the layout says to do. So maybe you want to change this. If you're the editor, maybe you've seen it, you don't really like it, you want to see what other options you got. You know, don't use the default. Let's use the alternative one. Save. Same exact everything. We have all the fields that we had before. They're just laid out differently because they're using a completely different panelizer layout. Um, and all we had to do as editors was just say we want to use this other layout. And it knows how to rearrange itself. And you could do that. You could have as many layouts as you wanted for that. So I'm satisfied with this. I always kind of like that staggered thing. So that looks pretty good. Um, Finally, you know, I'm doing this in exactly reverse order. I was supposed to do articles first, but I'm going to do an article first and something cool that it does. So with a blog, this, um, this one does have the moderation state. And it has only two options, draft and needs legal review. I, can't, I literally cannot publish this right now because, it's not, because it would need to be in legal review for me to publish it. And I'm, if I was a lawyer, the lawyer would be the one to publish it. But I'm super admin, so I'll do what I want. So for now, we'll keep it as a draft. Oh, thank you. 
a little bit more Samuel Ipsum. We have this checkbox to include it in the blog. We'll just check that to be safe. And we want to have an image. This image browser is not a Drupal thing. This is a lightning thing. Um, but it gives you the ability to just kind of have a nicer experience when uploading an image somewhere, or into an image field, rather. So I'll take that one as, it the, as this article's teaser image. Looks great. You've got to give it a name. And now it's just going to use this as its image field. But this is still kind of plain. I want to put a tweet in here. So let's go to 50 Nerds of Grey, my very favorite Twitter account ever. If you haven't seen this Twitter account, you need to read it. You'll, you'll laugh like an idiot. It's great. So copy the link to tweet. And let's embed that tweet in here, assuming it works. Yeah. So. Again, this is something Lightning gives us for free, the ability to, as you saw, we have the ability to, tweet, treat, uh, to treat tweets as entities. Um, and this is just a widget we have to create tweets easily without actually having to fill out a stupid form, because maybe you want to put it just in CK Editor and don't want to be pulled out of your flow. So let's put the Twitter, uh, the tweet URL there. You get a nice preview of it. I um, guess I'll just call that 50 Nerds of Grey. Normally, it goes into your media library. Like any other media item, hit place. And you get these options, which I don't care about. And you actually get the tweet live embedded into your content that will show up when we save it. So, oh, come on. So let's save that. And remember, it's a draft now. Um, we got the tweet. We got the body text. We got the image. We have my user icon, which is a Pokeball. Um, doesn't look as good as I want. So two points here. One, the media embed worked, which is always pretty cool. And secondly, is that the layout that we've defined for articles specifically with the, everything, with a lot of stuff on the left and then author on the right is applying here. And we haven't used the core block system for this. This is Panelizer doing this. Um, and we didn't have to, we didn't even have to call the themer. We didn't have to use blocks. We didn't have to do any, anything clumsy. It's just, this is the layout, use it. These fields go on this side, this field goes on that side. So we have that, and then if we want to put it into legal review, save as legal review, still unpublished because needs legal review. It's a new uh, moderation state that we came up with, but it's a, draft, it's a draft state, it's unpublished. So let's imagine for a second that I'm the lawyer. SU is the lawyer here. And then from here, since, it's, I, since I'm in legal review, I now have only two options. I can save it again as a draft, kick it back to draft. You've got to work on this more, guys. Or I can just kick it right to published. So again, looks the same, but we've solved the problem of content workflows by actually defining what we can start as and then where we can go from there. So four problems, four solved problems now. Right? Oh, come on, man. We got our media handling all set. Um, our media types are fieldable. We have a field for promoting tweets to the front page. Um, we have a workflow, a very, very clear workflow. Draft needs legal review published for articles. We could have other workflows for other things, however we wanted to do it. And we have pretty damn good control over layout. We have Panelizer for basic layouts of things. We have it also for multiple layouts of things if you want your editors to choose stuff. And then we have Panels IPE, all of this supporting full bleed regions, um, which look great and everybody wants them. So that's, those are some basic problems. That's how you solve them. Any questions? No? OK. That's cool. I'm ready to drink. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he'd need administer content. There are a couple of permissions he would need. Um, at the very least, there's a permission that Workbench gives you called like view unpublished content, which is kind of an unnerving name, but it basically means you can go in and moderate stuff that hasn't been published yet. And you, he would also need permission to use the applicable transitions. So there will be a permission for take needs legal review back to draft, and there will be a separate one for um, take needs legal review to published, and he'll need both of those permissions. But having that. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Uh, second thing, um, did you modify uh, when you were um, transitioning one content group to the next, you had this select with the state? I think the default being 
You're actually totally right. I forgot to mention that. That is a lightning thing that we did because I hated that button. Um, I thought it was massively confusing and terrible UX, so I uh, changed it. Yeah, any other questions? So um, when you transition states, um, what would, say, the lawyers see? They get a notification via email, or what's that like? And then um, when they log in to um, view this, uh, do they get a special version of the web page that filters the content? Currently, no, we would have to set up both of those things. So not, not right now. They don't get a notification. Uh, Workbench doesn't do anything like that specifically. I mean, you can definitely hook into the process and like, you know, have a hook something or other to send an email like that. Um, but Workbench moderation itself doesn't do anything like that. Lightning doesn't do anything like that. Um, and it also doesn't provide a view for any of this stuff. That's also something that you would have to build yourself currently. Um, where you, but you, it would be reasonably easy to have a custom view that like if the lawyer logged in they could go right there it's like here's a list of content needing your approval so it's and that would just be a simple view of like nodes of whatever type in this mod in these moderation states for you to review yeah i think personalized views of content for them to moderate and notifications are really important for any enterprise workflow that's what i was just wondering why you said i don't disagree yeah. um you know i i would love to see those both of those things added um and Perhaps I will if we have the time, and we should. Sorry, related to this, is there any plan to uh, integrate with the upcoming uh, rules module? Because that sounds, in Drupal 7, that, that's how you did that yeah. famous notification thing. And I personally would love to integrate with rules. I think it could get rid of a lot of custom code and make things even more flexible, and I'm generally always in favor of that. Um, I'm not sure about rules' level of completeness right now. Um, so basically, when it's ready, I will absolutely be all over that. Um, and I think the entire the rest of the Lightning team would agree with me. Any questions for my assistants or for me? Any more? Yes? What happens if you want to edit a published item? If you want to edit a published item? Um, well, let's take a look at that. If you want to edit a published item, you Workbench Moderation does this thing that I find pretty irritating where once a thing is published, it changes the name of the edit tab to new draft. And that's because every time you um, every time you make a save on a moderated entity type, moderated node type, for example, um, it creates a new revision. That's just how Workbench works. It has to do that. Um, so it kind of assumes once it's published that the next thing you're going to do is create a new draft of it. So it just renames it to new draft. But other than that, you essentially just click the edit tab. There's no real real difference there. We have some ideas about um, pushing better nomenclature upstream for that. You know, I think it could be less confusing. I agree. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. I'm not sure if we covered this. Does uh, Workbench moderation cover uh, in-place editing? Wow, that's a, that, that is, depending on how technical you want to get, that's a complicated answer. Um, I believe it does. I don't think, to my knowledge, there's no real reason why mod Workbench moderation would interfere with that. There have been bugs, I think, where like they were tangling with each other, but they're not Yeah, I can add a little bit of detail there. This yeah. is uh, Adam B., um, if you'd like. Um, we actually have some custom code in Lightning. So the, the, the problem space is you're using the in-place editor, um, you created a page, and you've published it. Um, the in-place editor then could edit things on the published page without sending it through a proper workflow. So what we do in Lightning is if an entity is under workbench moderation and it's published and you've used the, the IPE is exposed, we disable the IPE for entities that are published. So you have to send them back to a draft or some other non-published state before you can use the IPE again. Yeah, that's a workaround, I think. But uh, yes, that's how they relate to each other. Anything else? Yes. For paragraphs? Well, what I can say about paragraphs is I personally have never used it. Lightning has no opinion on it. And I know, like, not using paragraphs is like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But um, I would think that everything in paragraphs is going to work normally. Well, we actually know that. And it's worth noting that our PS team uses paragraphs with Lightning, and it's fine. Lightning's pretty. Lightning looks cool. It demos well, but it's honestly pretty unopinionated. It tries to do, it tries to like get its goals accomplished by doing as little as humanly possible, like any good programmer. Um, so, yeah, should be okay. 
Anything else? Oh, John, you froze up. And so did Adam. <sighs> well, good. At least we got through the presentation without it, right? Wait, right. what happened? We just missed a whole bunch of... No, no, no. Of... You, you froze up there, and I was just like, thank God we finished. You know? <laughs> did I get out the interesting parts, or did I freeze midway? No, uh, you froze in a funny face. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. So this all is uh, lightning, but it, it's not production ready yet. Um... We think Lightning's production ready. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, well, let me put it this way. We have got people using it on production sites. There's actually a person from Phase 2 doing a presentation, I think, tomorrow on how they built uh, a website for a major client with, they built it on top of Lightning. And so yeah, it is, uh, if it wasn't production ready, we would hear about it and we would be up all night fixing bugs, so. Yeah, yeah. Phase is talking about Al Jazeera. We've got, um, you know, Princeton is building a new site on it. Warner Music's building a range of, uh, of new sites on top of it. Um, there are a ton of very big clients, including a couple I can't mention, that are building on it right now. It's definitely production ready. Um, you know, there are modules within Lightning um, that may have a little way to go to um, you know fix some UX issues, etc. But Lightning itself uh, helps you with that because we we uh, make sure that, that group of modules is working and we will maintain them and update their versions and make sure they're working together. Um, so, you know, that's given the confidence for a lot of uh, people One of putting the things, every D8 site that's being built by our professional services team right now is on uh, Lightning. Another thing worth mentioning on that front actually is that Lightning itself has, and I don't know if John mentioned this, but it has a whole bunch of BHAT tests that are covering like all of our, basically all of our uh, functional interactions that Lightning, anything Lightning is doing, we're testing. Um, and we don't release unless the test pass. So we are checking. We're, we're you don't know if I mentioned that? You, just, you block out things that I say, right? That's what happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's true. So we are, we are we're doing some rigorous testing and everything, so we, we consider it production ready. Yeah. Right. Anything else? Is it Guinness time? I think it's Guinness so time. Thing, wait, 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 wait. One thing I wanted to mention was that we're going to make sure that we have a wrap up of this session um, that includes kind of the full video of Adam doing what he's doing, um, you know, building and, and me doing some building and um, Adam H talking through the slides um, that will probably be in a proper split screen format that we'll publish in the next couple of months. Um, so if you want kind of more details on, you know, what we've done here, um, that'll be a good source. Also feel free to get on to IRC and talk to us or, uh, you know, or to, to email us directly. We're really happy to talk about Lightning. The Lightning queue on Drupal.org is really active. Um, and so if you, if you use Lightning and you, you know, run up against any problems, we're pretty responsive on that queue. Um, you know, and I, I hope, you know. And when you say it's active, it makes it sound like we have a ton of bugs, which we don't. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there will always be things to improve. They're mostly feature requests, okay? Yeah. Um, so yeah, did I forget anything? No, I just like to thank my two assistants and Doris Wong from Acquia who did the designs in the IA and could not be here today. And we have our um, all of the code for the speed run we have on GitHub. Um, more info about Lightning at lightning.acquia.com. And we took all of our Pokemon from PokemonDB.net. Not that we used many Pokemon, but uh, you know these things happen. No Pokemon were harmed in the building of this. Yes. Site. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, I think we're good, guys.